Welcome to Question Everything, Episode 1, Bigfoot, Big Mystery. Today we will be taking a look at the cryptid, or mythical creature, known as Bigfoot. A cryptid is an obscure, undocumented creature originating from folklore, typically mythological in nature, but not necessarily supernatural. Their existence is only recognized as pseudoscience, Urban Dictionary. Cultures all over the world have their own detailed accounts of Bigfoot, but is there any truth to these myths? Bigfoot, described as a primate, is depicted to be around 7 to 10 feet tall. This would be an enormous creature. How on earth could there be no evidence of it? How on earth could a creature like this survive? Today we're going to be answering those questions and many more on Question Everything. Like many people, I was a skeptic in Bigfoot or Sasquatch for years. About two years ago, I saw a documentary called The Missing 411, and it is essentially about hot spots in America where people mysteriously disappear or are found dead either in the area after it had already been searched or oftentimes dozens of miles away. What truly intrigued me about this film was a portion toward the end where it goes into several disappearances in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It details the horrific and terrifying case of a group of hunters who go out annually to a cabin many miles deep in the woods that they had built, essentially out of a hollowed out tree. A massive redwood forest. Well, one night their camp is attacked and for years they had heard noises, um, seen many incredible things like orbs in the sky, uh, you know, and a lot of it sounds ridiculous to be quite frank. And they played a sound for us. They took recording equipment and uh, they recorded what sounds like apes communicating with each other quite frankly um, not quite like chimpanzees or gorillas it almost kind of sounds human and uh, it's quite disturbing I'm, I'm gonna play a little bit of this for you It's incredible to hear these sounds, as to me some of it even sounds like human vocalization, like Japanese. And because of the situation and the credibility of the people involved has led me to believe that these sounds are genuine. However, this still was not enough to convince me that Bigfoot was real. Truly, will put the nail in the coffin and convince me that there was some unknown creature that was being described in these accounts was the Travel Channel's program Expedition Bigfoot. In this series, a primatologist, Mariah, a hunter, Russell, and a Bigfoot researcher named Ronnie, all travel to remote areas based on an algorithm that produces a destination based on Bigfoot sightings. During this series, there is a stunning amount of various pieces of evidence, including FLIR footage, which is essentially infrared, which for those who are familiar with the Predator franchise are very aware. It senses body heat. I'm seeing some movement. Yeah, something moving across the screen right here. What the f This clip is truly just one of many incredible pieces of evidence that they capture on Expedition Bigfoot. The general gist of what they find is a lot of very creepy thermal images. Many of them appear to be bipedal creatures peeking out behind trees. The Bigfoot researcher who is on the team 
He talks about a theory where Bigfoot hunt via a method called tree peeking. Perhaps what they capture on these thermals are Bigfoot hiding and peeking. Scans the area for electromagnetic waves given off by living organisms. Because each type of animal gives off electromagnetic energy at a unique frequency. Due to the incredible budget of the show, they had access to a lot of equipment that most amateur Bigfoot hunters could never dream of. They end up bringing out an experimental piece of equipment called a magnetic loop antenna. What this antenna does is sense the electromagnetic pulse throughout your body that operates your muscles and brain. By isolating this energy, they can tell what type of creature resides in an area. For example, if a deer is in the woods, it will have a different electromagnetic pulse as opposed to a human. This is due to different heartbeats and different amounts of electricity used throughout the body. During their time in Pine Mountain, Kentucky, they pick up many different animal species on this antenna. But most intriguing of all, they find evidence for a primate. Yes, a primate. Pine Mountain, Kentucky. This along with eDNA evidence that they gather in Pine Mountain, Kentucky is enough to creep me out as I was born and raised in Kentucky. I showed you a sample of the chilling Sierra sounds, but assuming that Bigfoot is an ambush predator and that it uses coordinated attacks with others of its tribe, how can they communicate to one another without startling their prey? Perhaps the answers are under our nose. But wait, are there other primates that actually do coordinated hunting? Well, yes. The primatologist on board the Expedition Bigfoot team confirmed that many species of chimpanzee will split up and use one part of the pack to chase an animal towards the other, creating essentially a choke point or an ambush. Wood knocking is a term used by Bigfoot researchers. It is a form of communication that these apes use that can span long distances because as we heard earlier, the regular form of communication is quite startling. So I believe they use the wood knocking to communicate with one another and organize their hunts without scaring off prey. Wood knocking is basically a sound that is heard many times in these areas that sounds like two pieces of wood being clacked together. Sometimes it can be two, three, four, or five. There have even been reports of Bigfoot creatures using whistling or replying back to calls via whistling. This could be either to imitate birds or to send a message to others in their group without alerting any people that may be looking for them. If Bigfoot is anywhere near as intelligent as human beings, this concept of communication would be well within their grasp. If Bigfoot does indeed exist, then it has basic biological needs that must be met, just like every other creature on our planet. Assuming based on the reports that it is a type of bipedal ape, Let's take a look at how it could possibly survive. If Bigfoot is indeed an ape, then it is presumably an omnivore. An omnivore is a creature that eats both plants and animals. Being an omnivore would give Bigfoot a wide variety of food to choose from. Based on its presumed intelligence, it would also be smart enough to organize hunts. And oftentimes in the areas Bigfoot sightings are reported, there are many large prey animals such as deer, elk, and perhaps even bear. And there are reports of simple fish traps being found in Bigfoot nests. Perhaps they also prey on fish. It has been brought to my attention that there is indeed apes that already fish. There is a viral clip of an orangutan using a spear to fish presumably by watching humans do the same thing. And given that most ancient cultures on Earth had their own tale of Sasquatch or the Bigfoot, he's had plenty of time to brush up on his fishing skills. One of the other things that all living organisms need is shelter. So where does Bigfoot shelter? There are many intriguing structures that have been found by investigative teams in the search for Bigfoot. 
Some of them could be explained away as simple temporary habitation for campers, but many of it would be impossible or incredibly difficult for a human or a group of humans to complete. Even if it is something that could be completable, the next question would be why? On Expedition Bigfoot, they find dozens of these structures. Some of these structures appear to even be built across game trails deep in forests. It appears that perhaps they use this as a hunting aid. Putting these types of structures on a game trail essentially creates an ambush area or a bottleneck. Since they appear to be pack hunters, several individuals may force prey items in while others lay in wait. This would make access to large game much easier. As mentioned earlier, this behavior is also exhibited in chimpanzees. Speaking of chimpanzee, I mentioned eDNA earlier. Expedition Bigfoot actually takes eDNA, environmental DNA, from one of these structures in Pine Mountain, Kentucky. When they take it to the lab, it is discovered that there is primate DNA. I do not believe there is a wild pack of chimpanzees running around Kentucky. I think it is far more likely that science doesn't know everything and perhaps there is an unknown ape species roaming the countryside. Our final criteria that we're going to cover for what is necessary for Bigfoot to exist is family. Looking back at the fossil record, you would think that we would have some kind of evidence of Bigfoot. I believe the reason that we do not find remains of Bigfoot is because, just like humans, they share bonds with one another. If you share a bond with someone and they pass away, you're not going to just leave their body out in the open. You're going to bury them or some other type of ceremony, but you're not just going to leave their corpse out in the open to rot. But what if perhaps we already have fossil evidence of Bigfoot? In 1956, amateur anthropologist Ralph von Koningswald discovered the very first remains of an extinct or thought to be extinct ape species called Gigantopithecus. Original estimates based on the fossil remains led experts to believe that if this creature was bipedal, it would be around 12 feet tall. Since then, American paleontologist Peter Attell estimated the creature to be around 9 feet tall. Gigantopithecus, based on a mandible found, which is the bottom jaw and several teeth, appears to be part of the orangutan family, also known as Pongae. The most intriguing part of this find isn't even the animal itself, it's the timeline. If we look at the estimates, this creature went extinct roughly 8,000 years ago. That means that they lived right alongside humans. Could this be our Bigfoot? This is not the first instance of us believing a creature to be extinct, but in fact, there's a thriving population. Off the coast of South Africa in the early 1900s, a fisherman pulled aboard what is called a coelacanth. A coelacanth is a species of fish that was thought to have went extinct over 60 million years ago. This goes to show that humans, in all their infinite knowledge, do not actually know everything. In fact, many cryptids that we hear about in accounts could potentially be creatures that are endangered or that we have not discovered yet. Thank you for joining me today on our very first episode of Question Everything. The goal of this series is to open up a dialogue and perhaps together we can get a better understanding of the wonderful world around us. Question me, question yourself, question everything. If you liked this content, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, or possible video ideas for the future, feel free to comment them.